Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, welcome to the second module of uh, managerial economics. In uh, previous seven lectures, we are discussing about the introduction to managerial economics, and then different tools and techniques that how you gen uh, how generally the decision making is done, and what is or what is being used for the decision making. So our second module consists of uh, theory of demand, which talks about demand analysis. Essentially, how demand is related with the other market forces like supply or how it leads to equilibrium and also we will talk about the different uh, law of demand whether that is in term of demand consumer demand or in term of the utility. So, basically this module will talk about three topics one is the demand analysis, second one is the elasticity of demand and third one is consumer behavior. So, if you will do a quick uh, recap what we did in the last module. Uh, we introduced the uh, subject managerial economics, how it developed from the uh, subject economics. Then we discuss about few concepts that used in the business decision making. Then we discuss about the tools and technique for economic analysis and finally, we discuss about the optimization technique. Now, this present model the, it the focus is on the uh, demand, supply, the equilibrium how the elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply generally takes place and finally, what is the consumer response to the change in the demand and change in the supply, what we will be discussing through the consumer behavior. So, if you look at uh, the, the economy runs on its market and market works on certain market principle, there is a set of principle, there is set of laws. Uh, on that basis generally the market work. So, market works on a certain market principle and that governs the working of the market system. So, in other words generally we call that as the market mechanism and working of any market system the basis always on the basis of the fundamental laws of the market and the fundamental laws of the market is nothing but the law of demand and supply because demand and supply are the two market forces those essential for the uh, working of the market system. So, when you talk about the fundamental laws of market, it is laws of demand and laws of supply. So, in today's session, we will focus more on the first part of the market forces that is demand forces. We will define the demand, we will discuss what is the law of demand, how it works. Then, we will discuss a demand schedule, how the demand curve is basically drawn, what is the demand function, what are the factors that affect demand and in which scenario there is a change or there is a shift in the demand. Uh, then the second part of this session will be on second market forces that is supply forces. So, we will define what is supply, we will discuss the law of supply, then we will discuss the excess, exception of law of supply in which scenario generally the law of supply never works out as, as, as per the rule or as per the principle. Then we will discuss about a supply schedule, we will talk about a supply curve, supply function, supply function taking, keeping by two, two variable and the multi variable. Then we will talk about the factors affecting the supply and in which scenario there is a change or the shift in the supply. And finally, looking at the demand forces and supply forces, we will see how the equilibrium is generally maintained in the uh, economy or in the market, what are the precondition in which cases when there is a change in the demand, when there is a change in the supply, how it leads to disturb the equilibrium, whether the equilibrium gets really disturbed or there is no change in the equilibrium, what are the scenario that we are going to study in the market equilibrium. So, we will start from the first uh, market force that is demand and uh, when we uh, define demand, this is basically a relation showing the quantity of the good that consumer are willing and able to buy at various prices per period, other things remaining constant. So, here if you look at the other things, 
uh, whether it's the income, whether it's the market situation, whether it's the uh, forecasting about the price, all other variables that has a has some say when it comes to demand for the product, all other variables are remain constant and the relationship between the quantity of the goods or the quantity of the products and the uh, maybe at a typical price at a typical time period that is generally demand. So, demand is nothing but a relation showing the quantity of a good that consumer are willing and able to buy at various prices per period other things being constant. So, if you look at the definition there are two point one is willing to buy and the other one is the able to buy the product. So, if you uh, take forward this then specifically a demand for commodity depends on three preconditions. The demand takes place when the consumer has the desire to acquire it, when the consumer has the willingness to pay for it and when it has the ability to pay for it. So, what is this desire to acquire it? Maybe there are many products, what the consumer is willing to pay for it or maybe he has the ability to pay for it. But till the time the consumer has no desire to acquire that product, we cannot convert that into demand because the consumer has to wish for the product, the consumer has to uh, desire for that product, then only it can be converted into demand. The second criteria or the second precondition, precondition is willingness to pay for it. So, if you look at uh, even if the consumer has a desire to pay for it, a desire to acquire the product, he has the ability to pay for it. If there is no willingness to pay for it, the, it cannot be again part of demand because the consumer is not ready to pay for the product. In that case, we cannot convert that into demand. Similarly, ability to pay for it, this is strictly on the basis of income, whether there is a purchasing power of the consumer is present or not. If there is a consumer uh, purchasing power is present in the consumer, then the consumer has also the ability to pay for it. So, in this case if you look at the preconditions are three, desire to acquire it, willingness to pay for it and ability to pay for it. So, whether you if one of these three condition or one of these precondition are not being met, then in the demand is not possible. Even if the consumer has the willingness to pay for it, ability to pay for it, if the consumer has no desire to acquire it, it cannot be converted into or the part of demand. If the consumer has no willingness to pay for it, then again it cannot be part of demand. And if the consumer has no capability in term of money, in term of payment or may be not able to pay for the product, then again it cannot be considered as demand. So, demand for commodity implies that the consumer has to, consumer has the desire to acquire it, willingness to pay for it and the ability to pay for it. Then there are different types of uh, demand. So, we will uh, see few uh, different types of uh, demand. The first one is individual and market demand. The quantity of a commodity an individual is willing and able to purchase at a particular price during specific time period given his or her money income, taste and prices of the other commodity such as substitute complete is referred to as the individual demand for the commodity. So, individual to in a very simplified manner individual uh, demand is nothing but what the uh, individual is willing to and able to purchase at a particular price any specific time period keeping his taste, keeping his price and also looking at what are the substitute and complements products available in the market. So, any consumer, any specific time period at different price level or the same price level whatever the willingness to and ability to pay for it that is typically the individual demand. So, here we have if we introduce there are two uh, term over here what needs may be little bit explanation one is substitute and second is complements. So, one category is generally the substitute good, another category is the complement goods. You take the example of tea and coffee, they are the substitute goods because if you look at people, if they are not very specific about tea or not very specific about coffee, they consume these two products interchangeably, either they have coffee or they have the Tea. So, tea and coffee when one product is substitute of another product, this is generally known as the substitute goods. Similarly, if you look at petrol or diesel, 
again it is the case of your substitute goods, because one good is substitute for the other one. Similarly, complement is one, where one product cannot be consumed without another product. So, if you take the case of again tea sugar or coffee sugar or tea milk or coffee milk, again they are the complementary products, because you cannot consume one product without the another. You take the example of suppose car, petrol or car, diesel, you cannot run the car without petrol or without diesel. So, in this case we can say that car, petrol or car and diesel they are the complementary to each other. Similarly, if you are coming to the food item like if you take the example of bread and jam or bread and butter, again they are the complementary goods, because you can the consumer cannot consume one uh, goods without consuming another. So, if the product is independent, it is not depend the consumption of the product is not dependent on any other product, basically this is the normal goods. Otherwise, we get another two category of goods, one is substitute good, the typical example is again tea and coffee and second one is the complementary goods. In this case, one goods cannot be consumed without consuming the other goods. The typical example we always take whether it is car, petrol, car, diesel, butters, bread or jam and bread. Similarly, maybe there are uh, numerous example where we can say that okay, one goods cannot be consumed without the another good. So, considering this um, typically in case of individual demand irrespective of the substitute good, complementary goods, the prices of the goods or the taste and preference of the consumer at any specific time or any specific time period, uh, whatever the consumer demand of typical commodity that becomes the individual demand. Suppose, if you look at what is your grocery demand per month? That, that, that becomes the quantity demanded of a specific consumer on a specific month corresponding the prices of the different items in the grocery basket. The second one is the market demand. Market demand is the total quantity which all the consumer of the commodity are willing and able to purchase at a given price per time unit. Given their money income, their test prices of the other commodity is referred to the market demand for the commodity. So, in this case if you look at the other things remaining constant, the price is constant, the income is constant, the taste at the of the consumer at that typical time period is constant, prices of the other commodity whether it is substitute, whether this complements they are constant and given all these the total quantity what all the consumer they are consuming in a specific time period that becomes the market demand. So, if you take a uh, simple example may be you can take a case of how much a cup of coffee you take during a day. Some total of all the all the quantity per day per month basis that is your monthly individual demand for cup of coffee. But when it comes to the um, coffee vendor for him, it is always not the individual demand what consumer one is consuming or what consumer two is consuming. For it is that okay, monthly how much unit of coffee that vendor is selling that is the market demand. So, if the market price of coffee is 6 rupees and all the individual at the 6 rupees price whatever they are consuming in a month that becomes the market demand. So, here product is coffee, price is fixed, the consumer whatever they consume throughout the month. So, in a specific time period on a monthly basis price of the coffee given at 6 all the consumer how, whatever the amount of coffee they are consuming that consists of the market demand. So, in one way we can say the sum total of all individual demand in a specific time period in a specific price that becomes the market demand for the product. Let us go to the second uh, types of demand that is forms demand and industry demand. The quantity of forms product that can be sold at a given price over time is known as the demand for the forms product and the sum of demand for the product of all the firm in the industry is referred to the market demand or the industry demand of the product. So, it is if you look at again it is the case of uh, same differences between the individual demand and the market demand. Now, what is the difference between the firm and the industry? Industry is sum total of the number of firms. The firm also produce a product, uh, same product and the industry as a whole they also produce the same product. So, the quantity of the product what is being demanded for from the firm or from the typical firm that is become the firm's product 
and what is the sum total of demand for all the firms across the industry that becomes the industry demand. So, again we can explain it using the same concept that the sum total of all the firms product at a given price at a given time period is consist of the market demand or industry demand for the product. Because if you look at firm is nothing but the sub may be the part of the industry or industry is nothing but the sum total of all firms in the industry. So, here also again the difference between the firm and industry product is uh, firm is the individual productive unit and industry is the sum total of all the firms they are producing the same product. The third type of demand is autonomous demand or the derived demand. So, autonomous demand or the direct demand for a commodity is one that comes on its own out of the natural desire to consume or possess a commodity. This type of demand is independent of the demand of the other commodity. So, autonomous demand is there is no forces that guides the demand to happen. It generally comes from the natural desire to consume or natural, de uh, natural, uh, de uh, natural desire to own a com commodity or own a product. However, if you look at the derived demand, the demand for commodity which arises from the demand of other commodity that is the called as the parent product is called generally the derived demand. So, in this case the demand for this product generally comes from the demand for the other product. So, if you take specifically what is the need of agriculture or what is the uh, need for land or what are the uh, need for fertilizer. You need land, you need fertilizer, you need agricultural tool for harvesting. And this is always a derived demand because the, the, those commodity has demanded due to demand for food. Why the agriculture being done? Because there is a demand for grains and demand for grain comes from the fact that there is a demand for the food and that leads to demand for grain, that leads to demand for uh, land, that leads to demand for fertilizer and that leads to demand for agricultural tools. So, the, uh, the basic difference between the autonomous demand and the uh, derived demand is autonomous demand is independent, it can just happen, uh, it can just take place when the consumer has the desire to, desire to acquire it, willingness to pay for it or ability to pay for it. Whereas, uh, derived demand is where it comes from the demand for the other product. So, if you if you can connect this to this, this may be also like a product which is not uh, direct rather this is a indirect demand or may be derived demand because the demand takes place for the another product which leads to take uh, which needs to uh, which leads to the demand for the uh, this typical product. So, autonomous is direct and derived demand is always comes from the uh, demand for the other product. The next category of um, types of demand comes is demand for durable and the non-durable goods. Durable goods are those goods for which the total utility or usefulness is not adjustable in the short run. Such goods can be used repeatedly over a period of time. So, it is a kind of non-perishable goods which can be used again and again. The consumption can be repeat and the utility or the usefulness of the product is not with for one time consumption. So, durable goods are those generally the usefulness of the product has a specific lifetime and it is not in the short run. And the non durable good is basically the perishable good, it depends largely on the consumer uh, current prices, consumer income and fashion, it is also subject to frequent change. Like if you look at the demand for durable goods, maybe it is a vehicle, maybe it is a house, which if you look at and their usefulness or their utility never goes overnight or it is it is not for the short run rather the use for the uh, typical uh, durable goods for long like if you take the example of a refrigerator, if you take the example, example of a computer, if you take a example of a television specifically their lifetime is not short, their lifetime is long at least it goes for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years and sometime more than that. So, the demand for these goods are always different uh, from the non-durable good. Non-durable good is one because where the utility or the usefulness of the goods goes along with the consumption. So, once the good gets consumed, uh, the utility usefulness goes with that. So, the demand pattern is uh, there is a variation in the demand pattern between the durable good and the non-durable goods. 
like when there is a change uh, when there is a need to change the durable goods when you feel that okay you have already used it for 5 years you have already used it for 10 years you are getting a good maybe if you are getting a good exchange offer if you are getting a good uh, maybe discount you always feel okay i have already used this product for more than 10 years more than 15 years and if i am getting a good resale value and some discount on the new value then i am going for it or when the technology changes when the fashion changes along with that the demand for the durable goods change if you look at the television specifically maybe earlier it was just a normal screen then we came to the age of flat screen and then now it is a case of led and lcd so in this case the demand changes when the, the when we get a new product when in term of maybe the change in the technology change in the appearance or the change on the as a whole the product when there is a new product is being launched but in case of non durable good life you take the example of uh, which is short maybe vegetable is the extreme form of non durable good like what we use as the clothes what we use daily maybe it's a pen maybe it's a uh, notebook it's maybe a diary what you what we change frequently because the utility that goes with a very short span whatever the usefulness of the product that goes like if you take the example of a ball pen till the time ink is there it is being used so it's maybe 10 days it's maybe 20 days it may be one month it may be two months so the usefulness of the product is short and we need to change it when there is a requirement either when there is a change in the price when there is a change in the fashion and when there is a change in the income how it is related to ch change in the price maybe if the pr current price get changes if we are getting something good at lower price you always opt for bid and because this is also a low value product as compared to the durable goods similarly if you look at the fashion like we change our cloth patterns on the basis of fashion we feel that okay this is out of it outdated and i'm not going to consume it anymore in that case again the demand uh, comes over there because there is a change in the fashion and nobody use the outdated product rather everybody up to use for the uh, whatever comes new in the market so that is the reason th the use of durable and non durable goods generally different and that leads to the variation in the demand pattern of uh, demand pattern of durable and the non durable goods the last category what we discuss on the uh, types of demand is short term and the long term uh, demand so short term demand refers to the demand for goods over a short period whereas long term demand refers to the demand which exists over a long period of time so in this case again we can link this to our demand for durable and non durable goods generally durable goods are long term demand because demand which exists over a long period of time and uh, demand for the goods over a short period or maybe again you can uh, link this because if it is usefulness is less maybe you use that and this is a short term demand because your next demand is something else but long term demand is again what you use on the daily basis that is then that again you can uh, link that way long run demand now we'll discuss what is uh, law of demand as we discuss in the very beginning that the market forces governs by the demand forces at sort on the basis of certain principle on the basis of certain laws so in this case uh, we'll see what is the law of demand so law of demand uh, the basis is the relationship between the price and quantity demanded and uh, this is generally known as economic law that how the price and quantity they are related to each other the quantity of a goods demanded per period relates inversely to the price other thing constant so law of demand says that there is a inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded other things remaining constant and what are the other things here the other things here is that the factors that uh, those affects the quantity demanded for the product so keeping all other factors remaining constant which affects the quantity demanded the quantity of good inversely related to the price uh, in a typical time period so law of demand says that there is a inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded other things remaining constant so whenever there is a increase in the price quantity demanded supposed to decrease and whenever there is a decrease in the price the quantity demanded supposed to increase assuming all the goods are normal goods so law of demand Uh, says that there is a inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded 
assuming all the goods are normal good and all other things are remaining constant. But in few cases there is if you find the law of demand does not hold good there are a few exception where law of demand cannot be practiced or the law of demand uh, does not hold good. The one example is given goods. So, till the time we have introduced three type of goods if you look at one is normal goods, second one is the substitute good and third one is complementary goods. So, these are different kind of good that is given good sometimes this is also known as the inferior good or you can say it a specific case of inferior good this is all the given goods comes into picture. Now, what is a given goods? A given good is one in which uh, one which people paradoxically consume more at the price rise violating the law of demand. So, in case of given good law of demand does not hold good because once the price increases for this product generally people they consume more of it. But what is the what law of demand tells us? Law of demand tells us that whenever there is an increase in the price of the product generally the quantity demanded for that product decreases. So, in this case the uh, the pattern is not such because whenever there is an increase in the price there is a lead increase in the quantity demanded also and that that is why we say that this is not a normal good this is a given good and in case of given good law of demand does not hold good. So, uh, there is a uh, so in the background there is a story to this given goods how given goods comes into picture and how the how the law of demand does not hold good in case of given goods. So, during Irish potato fine in 19th century, century potato were the considered as the given good and potato were the largest staple in the Irish diet. So, as the price rose it had a large impact on income. People responded by cutting out on luxury goods such as meat and vegetables instead of bought more potato. Therefore, as the price of potato increased, so did the demand. So, if you look at uh, what is the consumption basket of Irish during um, uh, that time in 19th century, the consumption basket or their food basket consists of potato, meat, and vegetables. But being potato is the staple diet, the composition of potato more in the food basket price increases for potato, there is no change in the income of the consumer. So, in this case what the consumer they will do? Since potato is the staple diet, they need to have the same quantity even if there is an increase in the price. So, in this case consumer what they did? They started cutting down their expenditure on meat and vegetable which is considered to be the superior in the food basket and they bought more potato. Because potato is staple diet even if price increases still they have to uh, consume the same amount. So, the expenditure from the other superior items from the consumption basket being cut that is meat and vegetable and the same uh, same money is diverted into potato and in this case the price of potato increase and also the demand because even if price is increasing still people they are buying more of it which is again a. Uh, which is again the exception to law of demand where the whenever there is a price in the uh, price increases that leads to decrease in the quantity demanded. So, this is one case in case of given goods the price increases and along with that the quantity demanded also increases and that leads to exception of the law of demand. The second one is the Veblen effect. And this generally introduced the concept of uh, conspicuous consumption and the status seeking. If you look at in our daily life, it also happened that if something is expensive, we always feel that this is good uh, because there is a perception that the if there is an increase in the uh, increase in the price of it, generally it has to be good. Whether it's a designer product, whether whether it's jewelry, whether it's a maybe designer accessories, we always feel that if they are charging more, it has to be a good quality. So consumer, there they have the perception that if uh, price is being charged premium, then the quality is good and the product is good. And this is generally known as Veblen effect. So in this case, even if there is an increase in the price, people they always feel that if there is an increase in the price, so I think there is an increase in the quality and they generally go for it. And also this is considered as the status seeking. If the 
uh, if the consumer is consume some highly priced product, it always leads to the status seeking. And in this case, again the law of demand is not applicable. So, what is the uh, perception over here? The more expensive these commodities become, the higher their value as a status symbol and hence the greater the demand for them. So, if it is more expensive, they feel that it is again it is a value of the status symbol and they feel that it is a good quality attached to it and the, there is a greater demand for it. So, the amount demand of this commodity increase with an increase in their price and decrease with their decrease with the price. So, in this, uh, so typically for this type of product, when there is an increase in the price that leads to increase in the quantity demanded and when there is a decrease in the price, people they stop consuming this or they decrease their consumption assuming that since this is a lower price product, there is no quality attached to it or there is no value or the status attached to it. So, this is about if you look at in this case, typically this is the perception of the consumer that high value goods is better quality and it leads to it uh, links to also status whereas, the low value good even if it is may be good still the perception is that low value product since it is not um, on a higher segment it is always a it is always a inferior product as compared to other product and generally they decreases their consumption per it. So, in case of wavelength goods or in case of wavelength effect again the law of demand does not hold good and the price and quantity demanded is not related inversely. There are one more exception that is law of demand that is in case of prediction or may be expectation of change in the price of the commodity. So, if the price is going to increase, if there is a expectation, if there is a prediction that the price is going to increase, people they buy more the demand increases and if the price is going to decrease in the future that leads to decrease the consumption at this moment. So, sometimes the prediction when there is a prediction the law of demand does not work there. So, if you look at before budget if you have seen people they predict or people they do a forecast that after budget the price of this going to increase the price of this going to decrease that leads to some disturbance in the decision making or some disturbance in the uh, the consumer patterns for the consumer demand pattern for different goods. If the price is going to increase, the consumer feel that ok let me buy more. So, even if the price is on a higher side still the consumer buys more and if the price is going to decrease, the consumer even if the price remain constant still the consumer is consuming less assuming the fact that when the price is going on a lower side he is going to consume more. Similarly, if you look at whether the prediction is related to durable goods or whether the prediction is non-durable goods. The prediction works well, the prediction works more in case of durable goods because you cannot you can case of durable goods you can postpone your consumption till the time you are getting a favorable price, but in case of non-durable goods the prediction never work because this is only kind of necessity what we use in our daily life. So, we cannot postpone the consumption and in that case generally the prediction the role of prediction is bit less and in case of durable good this generally works and law of demand does not hold good. Similarly, in case of share market or the stock market where the basis is speculation. If the price of the share is increasing, price of the stock is increasing, there is a perception of the consumer that may be again it is going to increase and they are going to get more value if they are buying more. So, since the basis of share market or since the basis of stock market is speculation, the law of demand does not hold good there and this is one more exception to law of demand. So, if you look at by principle or by economic principle there should be a inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded and that is generally known as law of demand, but in case of uh, few instances or in case of few type of products generally the law of demand does not hold good like in case of a given good, Veblen good or when the market is governed by prediction or some kind of market like stock market, share market where the basis is speculation the law of demand does not hold good. There may be few more examples like in which case like when it comes to suppose necessity, but what is if the consumption is necessity, 
or if it is like emergency, if it is a life saving drugs, again the law of demand does not hold good. Even if price is on a higher side, since it is a part of necessity, this is a life saving drug. The consumer they are not changing the demand pattern. Like if you take a medicine every day as a precaution or as a part of treatment, generally the consumer takes that even if there is an increase in the price. So, in case of few extremes, again the law of demand does not hold good. Then we will uh, talk about the demand schedule and the demand curve. Demand schedule is a table that shows the relationship between the price of the good and the quantity demanded and demand curve is a graph of the relationship between the price of the goods and the quantity demanded. So, if you look uh, the relationship between the price and uh, quantity demanded, it is again on the basis of inverse that is inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded. So, when you when you graphically plot this uh, price of price and quantity in a graph looking at their principle or how they are related, we generally take quantity on the x axis and price on the y axis. Okay. And we know that there is an inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded. So, on that basis demand curve always slopes downward, because whenever there is an increase in the price that leads to decrease in the quantity demanded, whenever there is a decrease in the price that leads to increase in the quantity demanded. So, suppose we take point A, point B and point C and this point A is combination y 1 x 1, point B is combination y 2 x 2 and point C is combination y 3 x 3. X is our quantity and y is our price. So, if you look when the price is y 1, the quantity is x 1 when price is y 2, the, quant the quantity is x 2. Why there is a increase in the quantity from x 1 to x 2? Because there is a decrease in the price from y 1 to y 2. Similarly, when the price is y 3, the quantity is x 3. Why there is a increase in the quantity from x 2 to x 3? Because there is a decrease in the price from y 2 to y 3. So, price and quantity since both are in inversely related whenever there is a decrease in the price that leads to increase in the quantity demanded. And in a similar way again we can explain that when there is an increase in the price. Suppose initially the price is y 3 and quantity demanded is x 3. Now, price of y 3 a price is increases from y 3 to y 2. If you look at the quantity will decrease from x 3 to x 2. And again, if the price is increasing uh, from y 2 to y 1, the quantity will again decrease from x 2 to x 1. So, price and quantity they are both inverse related whenever there is an increase in the price that leads to increase in the quantity uh, uh, decrease in the quantity demanded and whenever there is a decrease in the price that leads to increase in the quantity demanded and demand curve is always a downward sloping demand curve, because both price and quantity they are inverse related to each other. The next we will see a demand schedule, this basically jot down the uh, relationship between the price and quantity demanded. So, if you look at there are th 5 points A, B, C, D, E and each in each point gives a combination of both the uh, price and quantity. So, at the point A like if you look at the graph again we can put this into graph suppose when the price is 15 quantity demanded is 8 and uh, again when the price is 12 quantity demanded is 14, price is 9 quantity demanded is 20. So, if you plot this again in a graph taking the number rather than y, y 1, y 2, y through if you are putting 15, 12 and 9 and in this case x 1, x 2, x 3 again if you can put 8, 14 and 20 again it shows the same relationship that whenever there is a decrease in the price that leads to increase in the quantity demanded and whenever there is a increase in the price that leads to decrease in the